In this video, I want to show you how I replace railing and balusters on an old porch. I'm going to be ripping out the old one and putting in new ones. Here's some shots of the porch beforehand. You can see it was built with untreated wood, so water got in and caused it to rot. All of the posts are surrounded by the same untreated wood, so I'm going to have to remove that beforehand and continue. I'm not going to be replacing that enclosure around it. I'm just going to leave it bare. The first step I did was map out my existing railing. So I just took dimensions from the inside of posts like this, mapping around the floor plan of the railing. Next step, you need to plan out how you want the railings to be sized. So typically there's a four inch gap on the bottom here and they're typically spaced around four inches apart. Then you want to decide on height. The uh, top of rail for height is typically 36 inches. Then of course you could decide how you want to actually line things up. So if this is the post right here, you want to decide where you want to space the railings across like this. You could be right here here in the middle over here and then as well as the top. Next to estimate how much material you will need you can add up all these sections and then that'll get you the materials for the top and bottom boards right here as well as the top railing. On mine I'm using 2x4s right here and right here and then 2x6s on top for the railings. You can also calculate how many screws you'll need. Typically you get toenail in like this going into the board so two for each joint right here so each section will have four coming in right here and then up top you're going to have to of course screw in the top railing they'll screw into the post as well as to the railing right here to calculate how many balusters you will need you will need to know your spacing between balusters as well as thickness of the baluster right here so if my baluster is a 2x2 two two, the nominal dimension would be 1.5 by 1.5 so I know it's one and a half inch wide and the spacing between is four inches so I add that so I know my spacing would be five and a half. Then you will need to divide the length in between the posts right here by this number and then add one spacing because you will always have another baluster on the other side. So if this was 60 inches wide from here to here, I do 60 divided by 5.5. That is equal to 10.9. So you know you're gonna need somewhere around 10 or 11 balusters. So if I multiply say 11. So if I multiply 11 times one and a half for the thickness of the baluster plus one minus the number times the spacing. So 10 times four and then add this. This come out 40 plus 16.5 or 56.5. So I know my remaining space that's in between the outside edges of each baluster. There's only 60 minus 56.5 or 3.5 inches remaining. I would divide that by two and then I know my gap is 1.75 inch on between the post and the last baluster right here on each side. That's good spacing. You could try playing with the numbers to make it the even number of balusters or an odd number. For me, I couldn't really tell a difference, so I just went with this and I just used it to try to reduce the number of balusters needed. Once you've mapped out everything, drawn it on paper, you need to know how many balusters you're going to need, how many 2x4s, and how many 2x6s, wherever you size these components here. So the first thing I did was start cutting on the existing sections of the railing. I just cut at the four corners, removing it from the post or the house, and then smoothed out where it was mounted removing any remaining nails or screws. To remove the encasing around the 4x4 post I just used a pry bar. I stuck it in and then hammered it down. Since these were nailed in there are a bunch of exposed nails so to remove these I just used a fencing tool which made quick work of them. I then removed the next section. I always wanted to keep the porch safe, so I only worked two sections at a time to make sure there was still existing railing on the other parts of the porch. Once I had removed and cleaned up the existing mounting points, I then measured out my spacing for the railings. This includes the top and bottom portions. To mark these out on the board, I put the measurement using a speed square and then marked across with a pencil. When you make the cut with the saw, you want to make sure the saw blade is on the right side of the mark. If you cut right on it, it might be too short. So I also found that spacing the board slightly longer than the space between the posts worked best just because it could compress and then hold itself up. The step is identical for both top and bottom board. If this is an old porch, you might want to measure measure every single time between top and bottom because the post will probably not be vertical anymore and the dimension will be different every time. To position the boards in place, I found it easiest to either mark on the board or 2x4 where they're mounting and then use a mallet to hammer them into place. Or you can make spacers out of scrap wood to control the vertical spacing then just sit them underneath the boards. Then you only have to worry about sliding them back and forth into position. Here's an example of using a spacer on another board. Once I have all the 2x4s in position, I start by toe them in. So I'm screwing in up at an angle from the bottom, 
and then at an angle again from the top. By toenailing them in, they are unable to twist or move. Since this was very green wood, I didn't bother pre-drilling any of the holes. I was using an impact driver, so what I would do is screw all the way in until I went through the piece of board I was attaching and went into the house, and then I would back it out just slightly and then hit it hard again, screwing it in. It's very obvious when it doesn't screw in correctly because it'll push the board backwards and there will be a gap in the joint you're trying to close. If you don't have enough clearance, like on the bottom part, to go in from the top, you can just come in from the side. So here's how I cut the balusters since I was just ripping one by sixes in half, I had to mark directly down the middle. I then clamped the board to the saw horses and then ran the saw down the middle. To speed this process up, I should have gotten some quick ratcheting clamps. I then cut the balusters to the correct length. At this point, I made little spacers that I could use to space the balusters correctly from each other. And to save time, I screwed in the two inch screws into the top of the balusters. Not all the way through, I just extended the very tip of the screw just slightly past the surface. I then roughly positioned them with my spacer so they wouldn't have to move too much when I put them on the other side. I would then referenced the spacing I calculated earlier to make sure I started from the correct location. First started by marking that distance and then screwing in the top screw. This isn't critical, you just put the top of the baluster flush with the top of the 2x4. I didn't tighten it all the way down because I still wanted to be able to rotate the board. Then I come in from the bottom and I have a level to, just to make sure it's completely vertical and I just use one screw for the top and one screw for the bottom. After securing the balusters, I then made the top handrail. To do this, I just measured the correct length, and if it's a corner, I mitered it. To attach the railing here, I toenail in from the top into the house or the 4x4, making sure it's at the correct location. And then I placed the screw about every 20 inches or so, going directly into the top of the 2x4. So same as the other sections, I continue to work along removing sections and adding sections. Here's a demonstration of building an entire section from start to finish. And here's a close-up of the first two sections. The top of the 4x4s were not level to each other. I made the mistake of making it level, and of course there was a big gap. After realizing this, I removed it and made the top of the 2x4 and railing level with the 4x4. The last thing I did was the stairs. This is basically the exact same steps as the other sections. I started by cutting off the existing railing, and then I fit a 2x4 and marked the exact angle, so I made sure that it was exactly like the previous railing. I then cut it and cut the other railing as well at the same time. I then mounted these up by putting a spacer at the bottom and screwing it in. To do the top rail, I put a screw in slightly past flush. That way it would be able to grab. Since I wasn't able to hold the bottom in, I used a nail to grab into it. I then secured the top in and screwed it in. Once everything was held in place, I then tightened down all the screws. To get the correct size balusters, I did the same thing. I made sure it was level and then marked it and then cut them out. And of course, mounting them is the exact same steps as the other balusters. I screwed them in with the top screw and then using a level, went through and made sure they were spaced correctly. And here is a finished product. All the boards are brand new and since they are pressure treated this time, the railing should last a long time.